So now having looked at the, uh, the overall picture with Judo Taiso and, uh, and the, then the breakdown of some particular applications that, uh, that might be uh, uh, useful to you, I'd like to just sort of reflect on the overall form of the thing that, and how things have changed. So if we look at the first Ansoku, we have this forward shuffle, this sidestep with a little tilt. We have the rear shuffle. We have the goblet step with a little tilt. The big back action. And followed by the little back action right here. And that's basically the initial Ansoku. That one doesn't change very much over the years. What, what you see mainly in altering there, by the time you look at the, the film that comes out in, uh, in 1959 from one of the senior students of Tomiki, uh, uh, Senta Yamada, you basically see the same Ansoku except that the movement patterns have now become linked. And so the forward and backward steps become linked in the form that we think of them today in this sort of pattern. So it defines this, this basic X shape, but more in a, a, a narrow dimension like that. Then we have the side to side steps linked onto an eight count, like we're used to here. The tilt is still present and here. Then we have the goblet step and, and he's eliminated the, the two backward goblet steps. So basically we just have the form that we're used to here with a little tilt and the form that we're here Again, with a little tilt, but he doesn't do the repetitions. When you look further into the 1970s, the Ansoku basically don't change at all from the 19, uh, uh, early 60s. The, the same basic pattern holds through, and the same basic footwork holds through. The only thing that I was able to really detect in terms of a change was that Mr. Tomiki's feet, by the time we're looking at him in the mid-70s, the back foot does have this quality of coming to a dis more distinctive rest. So, in other words, we're seeing an elimination of this floating foot, if I'm doing it from the side. The floating foot, this, now becomes this, 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 this. So each step starts becoming more defined. So we're seeing uh, that potential for any step settling to go into any other direction, which is, is again, a movement towards what we recognize as, as more uh, being able to have omnidirectionality, going in any direction from any particular step, which is a nice property to build into your, your game. Um, that's happening on each step in the Ansoku in the, in the 1970s form. So that's very recognizable. When we look at the differences going on in the Tandoku Waza, both for uh, uh, the earliest form, the 1950s, and then translating it and looking at it in the, uh, in the early 60s, or 59 and, and forward, we have the forms that are basically coming out with a single foot and translating this way. The hands that are cutting across, cutting across, here, here, and the hands that's cutting across here, 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 followed by the dropping form and the cut across form, all with this single foot action. That's linked together with the, uh, the uh, diagonal dropping form to the back, diagonal dropping, and the cross diagonal to the side, that way. All of that with the single foot moving. Um, after that, the last bit of the atimi is with both feet moving and the full 180s, 90s, 180s, 90s, 180s. So that we do get an example of uh, Sugiyashi working in our standardized, I mean, this particular section feels very much similar to the type of movement that we usually imbue in our in our uh, walking these days, but working with these four directions. So what's happens by the time you look at, uh, at the Atimi section, just that section alone, uh, by the uh, 
by the latter part of the 1950s, by 1959, when you see Senta Yamada execute it, again, he's only moving one foot, and again, he's basically ha having the straight rising shot. The hand now is no longer in a spear pattern, but is now more distinctively like Tegatana as he does it. The, uh, the, the sweeping actions basically are the same. Happening here, happening here, happening here. The outer sweep again, the same, 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 same. But the, uh, the coil actions then come into it, and you see uh, what we think of as Pet the Dragon take place here, here, and here, here. The, uh, so in that later form, you're seeing this, uh, this evolution, this shift of the Atemiwaza and the linkage of the, uh, of the uh, Pet the Dragon and the shoulder coils with the body drop action. You're seeing it unhooked from any... Uh, any sort of diagonal dropping actions. Those have fallen away by the early 60s. This is, and this, uh, this sideways has fallen away. The moving in the four directions has fallen away. Those techniques all disappear by the time you look at it in, uh, in 1959. Following through back into the 1951 form, we also had these, these coil actions of the arms, which mm, here, 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 and here. By 1959, uh, uh, they're linked, as I just showed. Here to here, and here to here. The further coil actions that are taking place in the earliest form, back in the 51, uh, the black and white film, uh, for instance, the stepping back and forward form, stepping back and forward form. That one also falls away and disappears by the time you get to 1959. When you look at um, the hip switch, the small hip switch, the one that goes here and then reverses, and goes here and then reverses, a shallow, laterally focused hip switch disappears by 59, and all we have is the standard hip switch coming here, coming here. In the um, pattern from 1951, we see uh, the down sweeping action, the arm sweeping down and up to a rise and then descending down, down, up to a rise, and then down. That's paired in 1959 with the opposite hand and foot action, which is kind of interesting to me. We have, if we think of this as the sweep this way, if we take the sweep this way and turn opposite foot, we have this, which is what we see in Sinta Yamada's film. And so um, we have two paired actions dealing with the sweep coming in, turning, and the sweep going out and turning. Kind of an interesting parallel there. Finally, when you look at the, uh, the regular hip switch, the one that stays the same from the very earliest form to the latter forms, by the time you're looking at it in 59 and then further on into the 70s, when you're looking at opposite hand and foot turn, you get to see an interesting parallelism because if we think of, I'll do it sideways, if we think of opposite hand and foot working in hip switch here, you can also think of this working as the same basic form for opposite hand and foot turning over the top here because that's basically the identical footwork that you see taking place both in 59 and in uh, uh, 73, 74, when the, when the later film was done. So we have a parallelism between turning the hips and operating in this plane and turning the hips and operating in this plane. The key focus here is that as you reach peak of body rise, this comes right over the head, right here, that you're not uh, letting the hand get behind or, or too far in front. Opposite hand and foot, rotate. Opposite hand and foot, rotate. The final concluding action that we see um, stays the same. Basically, here, here. That's true when you look at the 1951 version, 
That's true when you see the 1959 version, early 60s version. That's also true when you look in the 1970s. When you compare differences from the later version, from Senta Yamada's, which basically seems very similar, looks a lot like what we're used to doing. I'll, I'll run through it basically here. Then here. Then here. Then the hands. The hands. Pet the dragon. Then we have mm, the turning actions. The turning actions, followed by the other turning actions, right? Here and here, followed by hip switch. Followed by hip switch to the high point. Hip switch to the high point, and here. So that's my attempt to replicate what I'm seeing Yamada do in 59. When you compare that to the forms of walking that we normally do, it's probably the closest representation I find. That uh, obviously the forms that branched off coming out of uh, oh, the, the middle part of the United States from the 1960s and 70s started with that as its basis and work from there, from what I can tell. When you look at the 1974 work with, uh, with Mr. Tomiki in Japan, he's actually narrowed it down even further, and several pieces have fallen away. So if you take a picture of that, what you see is uh, the onsoku is the same. The footwork, not very different, except for that little shift in terms of the back foot is now operable. When you look at the handwork, the hand is very definitely now in a tegatana position. He's also allowing that back foot to move just slightly. It's not, it's not tricky, uh, moving a lot. He's not sliding it in deeply. But it is starting to operate in terms of a little scooch. He has that bridging potential from the back leg operable in each hand action. What's interesting, though, in the 74 is that you see paired actions of, of swings. So you have an action, for instance, that begins here, coming down, back, and then up. Here, down, back, and then up. The lateral forms of them have fallen away. Those have disappeared. Next just comes a paired set of actions dealing with the, uh, the two uh, 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 diagonal strikes. So we have this paired with this have this paired with this, which has its own potentiality in terms of hitting them twice on, on two different lines in a successive series of steps. Starts to suggest the ideas of pulsing for terms of, uh, of Kazushi. He, that is linked with these actions. And again, all the side actions have gone away. No longer doing the lateral turns for this. Uh, that concludes all the standard pushing that goes on in the place, and he cuts directly from there to hip switch. The big turns have now gone away. We're going straight to hip switch. And the final turn, here and here, here and here. So what it defines in my mind is a winnowing on process that sometime in the, in the late 1940s when Mr. Tomiki had been captured and was in prison camp and was trying to come up with a, a central form that would contain all the essential skill movement sets that he wanted to preserve while he's in prison, uh, ways that would basically um, um, encapsulate all fundamental movement that he wanted to preserve in terms of his Aikido training. Because by this time, remember, he's been training in Aikido maybe 20 plus years. He's thrown into prison camp. His, his, his technical development is now potentially forestalled. He doesn't know how long he's going to be in there, maybe forever, but he wants to preserve the skill sets. And he wants to, to condense things down 
to as fine a, a, a line as possible in terms of creating the, a, a way to hold on to the central movement skills that create Aikido. From that time forward, we see a large number of, uh, of derivations, but it always concludes in terms of a narrowing of focus of things that are generally in place being pared down and pared down and pared down over a long series of time. So over that 20 year period, we have a, uh, a, a condensation from the broadest down to the more narrow. Thank you.